Good morning. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome. Welcome to this, the 10th D2. This year's event has been entitled The Audience. Uh, I'm Richard Miller, CEO of HEK here in London um, and global chair of our creative agenda. Uh, as we meet today in something of a congregation rather than an audience, I have to say I had something of a Whoopi Goldberg moment earlier this morning, standing here in front of the altar. Um, there is arguably a more important event taking place a few miles north of this city. Um, and I'm, of course, referring to the Scottish referendum. Um, an event that probably talks to the most complex, diverse and impassioned audience of all, the electorate. Now, I'm a proud product of union. I was born to a Scottish father and an English mother, hence the ginger hair, and the spelling of Miller with an A, which I tell my children to correct everybody who gets that wrong. Um, and on a personal level, I don't want to see that particular union torn apart. But I think there are certain lessons um, that the unionists and we as a group can learn from the independence campaign over the last few weeks and months. And by way of introduction, I was just going to call out three particular lessons which I think are important for us all. And I think you will hear many of these echoed in the presentations you will hear from the various speakers today. The first of these is the fact that it's the heart that says yes. By that I mean that all Scots understand what it means to be Scottish and feel good about Scotland's achievements. The Scots have a very specific story defined by their history, by literature, by language, and by their very outlook on life. And I think the nationalists have understood the way to the heart better than the independents. The idea that the Scots can shape their own future is quite an exhilarating thought in anyone's book. And I think the nationalists have tapped that emotion particularly well. By contrast, the unionists have failed to articulate a comparable story for Great Britain. I think Great Britain has suffered from a lack or a belief in its identity in this campaign. And the, camp the, the unionists have failed to rediscover the heart of Great Britain. Now, Gordon Brown's impassioned speech of 24 hours ago has come very late in the campaign. And it might have done enough to convince those split between head and heart. But the results tomorrow morning will tell if that has come too little, too late. The second lesson is the simple fact that your audience is smart. The lowest point in the Unions campaign came with the launch of the Better Together TV campaign, which patronised its audience. If you patronise your audience, you're unlikely to inspire your audience. And I think, whilst we're going back in time, to remember the phrase from that great Scottish-born advertising guru, David Ogilvy, the consumer isn't a moron, she is your wife. And the third lesson, arguably the most important, Authenticity is more important than authority. Alex Salmon, the council house boy from Linlithgow, has managed in this campaign to take on the old empire and through tenacity and grit might well win the day against the old empire. And it means much more to him than simply, as Cameron described it, kicking out the effing Tories. It's a much broader more authentic campaign than simply that. And I was interested to read a quote from one of Salmon's former advisors who put his style like this. It's not that he changes his messages for each audience, but the, that he has an instinct for knowing how people want him to fit in. I think when we talk about the relationship between audience and brand, audience and corporate, that quote is quite an instructive quote regarding the dynamics between audience 
and brand. And of course, Salmon has led the most modern campaign and very much the red thread that works through these meetings and these gatherings uh, is the impact of digital. The nationalists have used Twitter and Facebook in a far more sophisticated way than the unionists and turned politics back into a social activity. And Wings, the largest dedicated political website in the Yes campaign, has provided a potent voice to the grassroots movement and provided them with a voice for their cause on the web and across social media. Salmon has done something quite remarkable. He's actually made independence cool in the face of David Bowie. Who would have thought that Salmon was cooler than David Bowie? Um, but it will be this time tomorrow that we will know who ultimately persuaded the electorate. Which of the leaders presented a future with which this audience, the electorate, could identify and engage, and which argument provided the greater purpose? And I think whilst the result remains on a knife edge, I think our three leaders down here in London and Westminster, Cameron, Miliband and Clegg, will be having one of those days that might best be described by that other famous Scot, squeaky bum time. So I hope you enjoy today. Um, we have a packed agenda, a diverse group of speakers. Um, as always, we hope that this is an interactive session, that you ask questions, that you challenge the speakers. And with that, I'll pass over to Candice, who is going to take you through in more detail today's agenda. Thank you very much.